Welcome back to the Epic Storm. I am Brian to Cook, and today we're pulling a donation deck from our longtime supporter, Tyler Carden, who is an ant specialist. And if you're unfamiliar, ant stands for ad nauseum tendrils. It is the premier past and flames deck of the format. It's not actually the best ad nauseum deck of the format. That would be the Epic Storm. A little bit silly, I'm aware, but it's just the naming conventions that have happened over over a decade's worth of changes. But hey, we're playing the past and flames deck today. Thank you to Tyler for their support, and honestly, I really like this deck list, so let's talk about some of the unique uh, cards in this 60. So we have a main deck copy of Ave Progenitor Ooze. That's quite good with the four main deck copies of Wishclaw Talisman. Typically, you would use Lion's Eye Diamond to help cast the Ave, and you're rewarded for powerful singletons with the Wishclaw Talisman. So, for example, if you needed a Reign of Filth to get to Cabal Ritual Threshold, you could do that. And it's sort of the benefit of playing Wishclaw. But there's actually some, you know, awkwardness with that as well. And that's Infernal Tutor rewards you for playing pairs of cards. Wishclaw rewards singletons. So there's a little bit of friction there, but for the most part, I think it's fine. So just wanted to do, you know, talk about that a little bit. And other than that, like the deck is pretty stockish we have four thoughtsies three veil of summer no copies of duress anywhere in the 75 i'm a big fan of that no preordain either i don't think the, those are cards that have aged well in an era of the london mulligan or um the fire design cards if i'm being completely honest so when we look at the sideboard i see a copy of besaju who endures here and this is a card i've actually been testing in the epic storm itself i've played a bunch of lists recently and i've played some that have a main deck copy of besaju with another in the board i've even tried a single list with two main deck besajus and i've really liked it and i think once again it rewards you with which claw talisman for getting those powerful singletons i'm not a huge fan of 15 lands uh tyler's list has 15. I'd be looking to squeeze in a main deck copy of Besaju over one of these lands personally, uh, but that's just my two cents. And I also think that like, you don't usually see too many lists with a main deck Chrome Mox and a main deck Reign of Filth because they kind of support different things if I'm being honest. Like Reign of Filth wants you to go long, Chrome Mox wants you to be fast. So Reign of Filth can be fast as well because it does get you, like if you play Reign of Filth on turn two, for those few extra cards for Cabal Ritual, that can happen. But you would need to be in a situation where A, you have Reign of Filth, B, you have Cabal Ritual and don't have Threshold, and C, you're able to win. A lot of what ifs, right? Where Chromox is primarily here to help support Ad Nauseum. That, that's why there's a little bit of friction. Like, the, Reign of Filth wants the game to go long. Chromox, you want to be explosive. I don't know if that could be a Besaju slot. I don't like 16 lands. So, I mean, I, I don't like 15, so 16 doesn't make sense. But these are just some things that I'm thinking about. Uh, feel free to give me feedback. I mean, Tyler knows what they're doing. They're an expert, but this is just my off-the-cuff opinion. In the sideboard, Tyler took my advice a while back and started playing Leyline of the Void. I'm a big fan of this. Like, if you're going to play Surgical Extraction, you might as well just play Leyline. You can board out the Ad Nauseum and then just have a Haymaker in the matchups where you want that effect. And one of the things with, with Leyline over Surgical is it can't be hit by Grief or Unmask or anything else. Red Black Reanimator or Rakdos Reanimator plays 12 discard spells in their deck now between Thought Seize, Grief, Unmask, all that good stuff. So sitting on a surgical is just so dangerous when instead you can just have this card that knocks them out dead. And I think that's what Leyline does. To complement the Leyline of the Void, we have Helm of Obedience, which you pay X and target your opponent. They milk cards until they hit a creature, etc. Well, with Leyline of the Void, those cards never hit the graveyard. So a single mana for Helm of Obedience decks your opponent. Why is that relevant? Why would Tyler choose to play this combo in the deck? Well, Ant traditionally is a Tundras of Agony win condition deck. There's no sideboard empty the warns here. There's no grape shot. So by having a Helm of Obedience, Tyler now has a way to win through Veil of Summer, which is really, really interesting. And when you board in these cards, you're often boarding out the Ad Nauseum and then you board in Peer into the Abyss. That's the idea. So it's all a consistent package. From there, we have two Abrupt Decay, the Besaju, and Hercules Recall as answers, and then Dress Down versus decks like Cephalid Breakfast or Doomsday or whatever. But that's the deck tech. Let me know what your thoughts in the comment section down below. I'm sure Tyler would love to hear those as well. Um, 
I mean, I'm not an expert. We're going to play today. This is just my hunch going in. So maybe by the end of these five matches, I'll have changed my tune. Stick around and find out. I will see you in the first match. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, early access to videos, exclusive members only content, and access to our members discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us like theepicsrum.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via theepicsrum.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to match number one. We are on the play. Okay, this looks like a hand that could be a turn two depending on what our opponent's playing. I will keep. We really just need one more mana. Lead on the Misty Rainforest and we'll pass. Ancient Tomb, Grim Monolith. Okay, not liking this. I am liking them passing the turn. Big fan. Okay. So we'll fetch. Grab an underground sea. Like I said, we're really just looking for like a dark ritual here. I'll take uh, double lion's eye diamond as well. Cool. Okay, so we'll fetch down to 18. Grab bayou, I guess. I don't know. Cabal ritual. Lion's eye diamond. Lion's eye diamond. So... I don't know what our opponent's playing, but there's kind of a free play that we can make here. And that's don't play in a Warping Whale. Our opponent could be on something like Cloud Post. I don't know what they're on. But Warping Whale is a card we could theoretically lose to here. And we can beat it just by saying I'm okay with one less mana in my mana pool. So I'm going to do that. And we'll make some mana. Activate the Wish Claw. And we'll be casting Ad Nauseum with... One black mana floating. We are down two lines of diamonds. Good start. Okay. Term is five, six, seven, eight. We'll flip again. That's term nine. So if we were playing around Warping Whale, the, technically we're not there yet. Flip again. Flip again. All right, we have one more safe point of damage we can take. Basic Swamp. Reign of Filth. We'll stop there. Tyler's going to be happy that Reign of Filth came up. Cast it. This makes one additional block. We'll sacrifice both of our lands. Play the Lotus Petal. And there's something that, like, every Storm player loves which is winning with no hand, uh, no board, nothing. So here you could actually put lethal tendrils on the stack, discard your hand, sack the lotus petal, and have no board, no hand. Uh, that is one of those cool victories you could have had here. Not really sure what our opponent's playing. Um, I don't know if it's cloud post or not, so I don't know if we want the Ave. And it's worth mentioning in the deck tech I talked about, Home of Obedience, Ave is another way of beating Veil of Summer. I don't think we want... The Veils versus the Ancient Tomb deck. Probably want the Hercules Recall. These Abrupt Decays and the Besaju. It's 61. Probably take out the Reign of Filth even though it was decent for us there. Let's submit this. At first I thought we were playing the Epic Storm. This hand looks so similar. A few cards different, but we'll keep. City of Traitors. Mesmeric Orb. So they're on the, the Karn Forge deck. Format script, okay. Another tutor effect. I mean, that's not awful. Play the Volcanic. If three mana. Next turn, they could Karn. I'll see if I can brainstorm into a Thoughtseize. We could not. We're going to mill the Wish Claw past the turn. So Mesmeric Orb says that they mill, and here our opponent's floating mana so that way they can mill. They're trying to hit Echo of Aeons. Three mana for a Basalt Monolith, okay. So now they can uh, tap and untap the Monolith to mill their entire deck with Mesmeric Orb. Next turn, they're guaranteed an Echo of Aeons. Dark Ritual is the card we want. Actually, drawing the Tendrils here is really awkward. Oh no. I was thinking that I could ponder it away. Uh, so 
I last turn I should have pedaled pondered. That would have gone around this because now they get to exile our tendrils with the Tormod's crypt if I don't find a brainstorm. Let's cast that ponder. Another diamond, so that would give me ad nauseum into Eve, but they would be able to exile my tendrils. Okay, I think that's what we're doing here. You could also just go put Eve on the stack, and that's something you're allowed to do, but I've already shown that our opponent can tap and untap their stuff over and over again, and we want to stop that. Infernal Tutor, hold priority, will sacrifice for black, black. Discarding the tendrils here is just so brutal. Grab the ad nauseum. From 20. Okay, there's Abrupt Decay. Dark Ritual is good. The Sage you, I like that. There's a Lotus Petal. So I can, <clears throat> excuse me, destroy the Mismeric Orb and then Eve. I can also besiege you them. We'll stop here. Dark Ritual. Cabal Ritual. Will they let me get Threshold? They could just do it here. This is a pretty decent spot to use your card. And they do. Okay. I don't think we can get the Threshold. Um, destroy their Mesmeric Orb. So now they're going to mill a bunch of cards, but they're off Metalcraft. This is going to be annoying. Okay, uh, I'm going to just be quiet while they mill through their dock. Okay, so I've hit the F6 key. I don't need to click anymore. Like I mentioned, our opponent is just trying to mill until they get the Echo of Aeons. You need to see a lot of their deck here. And there it is. There's the Echo. Do you... Okay, so we'll turn off our F6 because we have mana floating. And now I will cast Cabal Ritual. So I have exactly enough mana to Eve right now. Um, what I don't have enough mana to do is Thought Seize first. We have two diamonds in exile, so I can use this Infernal Tutor and reveal Lines Eye Diamond, go get the fourth. I wonder if I could Past in Flames first here and Abrupt Decay their Opal. I mean, I do have two Cabal Rituals in the graveyard. I think I might have enough resources. All right, so Infernal Tutor floating uh, red-black. We passed in flames. Cabal Ritual, Cabal Ritual's eight mana. All right, so it at least gives me enough to Thought Seize them, and I think that's fine. So we'll do black-red. Storm is 15. There's that passed in flames. Cabal Ritual. Cabal Ritual. So it's eight mana. Infernal Tutor, four. Oh, no, I've used all four Lion's Eye Diamonds. Oh no, it just dawned on me. Did I just punt? Oh no. There's only two pedals. Ah. Uh, I thought this was a free play. I'm an idiot. Now I need them to echo. Damn. Yeah, I threw this one. I mean, technically we're still in it, but we have to let our opponent resolve echo. Play the pedal. Thought sees them. Definitely taking Karn here. We'll destroy their monolith. Okay, pass. Take a draw. It's Thought Seize. We can't play it. Pass the turn. Sure. I'll go to three and Thought Seize them. Get rid of that Mystic Forge. I'm definitely dying to this saga. A little surprised. It, I guess it doesn't actually... Hmm. Okay, we might see an Echo here. No, okay. Ponder. We'll keep the Misty, I guess. It can get our other green source. I'm a real dummy. I don't think I want the Dark Ritual, so I will fetch. We must have gotten rid of our Trop at some point. Pass the turn. There's a Diamond. And now we're spinning the wheel. Let me untap. Pretty unlikely. From Monolith. Their monolith with double voltaic key in play makes a lot of mana. They play another copy of Grim Monolith, they tap that, they are now up to six mana. For Basalt Monolith, three cards in hand. Pass the turn. Pass the turn. Two cards in hand. What is it? Mystic Forge floating two. And two voltaic keys in play, so this could be very good for them. They untap the monolith. 
for a car in the great creator. They grab another copy of Tormod script, Diamond. Uh, now they get to play Micah and Flatus. And they do. We'll, we'll, we'll concede to that. So this game was my own fault. Uh, so fun fact, you do not get to play five copies of Lion's Eye Diamond in this format. Uh, that is my own uh, mess up, and I will own that. So you could board in Leyline in the Void against them. I don't think it's actually super useful. It's only good against their like three copies of Echo and nothing else. So I don't think we want that. They actually don't have any Abrupt Decay targets, so I don't think we want that in our deck either. Um, well, okay, that's not true. They don't have any meaningful Abrupt Decay targets. Like They have defense grids and stuff like that, but there's no Chalice of the Void that you have to worry about. So I don't think we're really interested in this. We can bring back in two cards, but I'm not really in love with any of the choices. We're at 58. If you board out the Ave and the Ad Nauseum, you can bring in Pier, four Ley Lines, and the Helm. I don't think Hercules is actually that great against them. Like, it's fine. But a lot of their stuff they can just redeploy in a single turn anyway. So that's 61. Maybe board out the Basic Island? Let's try this. On the play for game number three. So far away from Pier with this hand. But we are very, very disruptive. I think I'll try it, but I don't love it. Basic Swamp into Thoughtseize. Opponent kept six cards. They want to Echo. Take away their Diamond. Play out Lotus Petal and we'll pass. Just in case they rip the extra Lion's Eye Diamond, we want to get our card in play. City of Traders, Lotus Petal, Lotus Petal, Key, and they're passing. We'll take a draw. Another Claw. Let's deploy. So you could Thought Seize here, but if our opponent drew a land, you're putting the Echo to the graveyard. And I think that's just kind of risky for no reason. Needle. That one hurts. This is the only card that we had in our deck that dealt with the Needle. Because I boarded out all the Abrupt Decays. Ay ay ay. Let's brainstorm. Get rid of the claw and an extra thought seize. Pretty sure that was the only answer. Yep, I'm a dummy. Alright. We already knew this. Cast Ponder. I, I just don't have enough mana, as tempting as this is. Alright, I'm I'm beginning to wonder if I should let my opponent echo. Okay, we're taking a risk here. Pass the turn. Infernal Tutor off the top would give us Peer into the Abyss. Uh, Ms. Miracor mills past and flames Peer. Okay, so Cabal Ritual wins now? Brainstorm. Let's cast it. We don't want the Ley Line, so we'll put that on top. Am I supposed to Thought Seize again? Okay. Pass the turn. They mill an Ancient Tomb. The Lotus Petal. So they can Echo with two floating, they decide not to. Cabal Ritual. Ponder. That's a good one. Cast it. Does Dark Ritual work? Okay, so this is six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Flashback Pure brings us down to five. Dark Ritual will bring us up to seven. So if my math is correct, if my math is correct, this is lethal. By lethal, I mean draw 20. We'll do blue-red, because I don't trust myself. Flashback Past in Flames. Dark Ritual. Peer into the Abyss targeting me. Land for turn. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Cabal Ritual. About another copy of Cabal Ritual. Ley Line of the Void. Oh, we didn't, we didn't actually hit a tutor in there. I forgot that we don't have access to Wishclaw. Um, a little awkward. So we'll play Lotus Petal and Ponder, hoping to hit Helm, Tendrils, or Lion's Eye Diamond. I shouldn't have played all the rituals. So taking the Chromox gives me a free redraw here. I can cast another Ponder. And I can also shuffle with Infernal Tutor because we have so much mana. Uh, reveal another Ponder. Okay, we'll play Chrome Mox, imprint a Ponder, 
Cast Ponder from the Graveyard. There we go. I think we'll just take the Diamond. You heard it here, kids. You can play as terribly as me and still win a match of Magic the Gathering. Hold priority on this Infernal Tutor. We'll sacrifice for three green. Because I can. Activate, or not activate, click OK. And now we'll go grab the Tendrils. Cast it for Storm 19. 19 drills. We are officially 1-0 after so many play mistakes. Tyler, I hope you're getting your money's worth. I'll see everyone else in round number two. Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as Goblins, Squirrels, and Slime Time Live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. Match number two, we're, we're facing a mod of the Storm Discord, Jax, always on wild combo decks. We're on the play here. Um, I mean, this is pretty good. We'll keep. I think we're kind of forced to hold open Veil of Summer, unfortunately. Play the Misty. Pass the turn. I'll, I'll feel dumb if Jax echoes and we don't have a Lion's Eye Diamond in play. All right, so I think Jax is on an Omni deck. We'll take a draw. The Ball Ritual is fine. Ponder. I like the Thoughtseize. Unfortunately, we're fetching into Brainstorm mana here. A Fluster Storm. Okay. We'll pass after Fluster Storm happens. Our best draw is Dark Ritual or Lion's Eye Diamond. Fetch a swamp and passes. How about another thought seize? I'll take that. Let me seize your thoughts, Jack. Jax, my bad. Personal tutor, omniscience, cunning wish. Well, it, it seems pretty clear here that the pick is the omniscience. I said personal, profane. I'm sorry, reading is very difficult. Um, yeah, it's just the omniscience. Pass. Uh-oh. Jax, did you draw another Omniscience? Saving so. Emrakul. Okay. So we have a window here. We know that Jax cannot interact, so we'll cycle this Veil of Summer. Okay. What's better, Tendrils of Agony or an Emrakul? Stick around and find out. Lotus Petal. We'll fetch... Red Volcanic, I guess? I don't know. And now we can... Storm is one. Inferno Tutor for another copy of Cabal Ritual brings us up to four. Lion's Eye Diamond would be five. Pass and Flames would be six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. That is lethal. Cabal Ritual. Okay, we're doing it. Sacrifice for red. Flashback the Pass and Flames. We did it. Okay. We have taken game number one from the legendary Jax. Jax is very, very good. All right, Fluster Storm comes in. Maybe we want the Besaju? I'm not really sure about that one. I definitely don't want the Ave. That is for certain. I also think that the matchup in the post board games isn't about speed. So you can get rid of this Reign of Filth as well as the Chrome Mox. And so the basic island gets a little bit better when we board in Fluster Storm. Tough call here. All right, I'm going to board out the island. If I get punished, I get punished. Game two on the draw. Absolutely unplayable. Also, have I ever told you how much I hate opening up Tundra's Vagony in my opening sevens? Uh, if your name is Alex McKinley, you hear me say this often. Because Alex tricks me into trying Tundra's Vagony in the main deck like once a month, and it's always just terrible. I mean, this is a hand. It's just not a hand that I like. We'll keep in bottom the extra Cabal Ritual. Prismatic Vista. Island Ponder. Classic. We draw for turn and it's a Ponder. Okay, well, we'll cast it looking for a Fluster Storm or Thoughtseize. I don't think 
we want to besiege you because if they have shown tell omniscience emrakul i lose it does it's i mean it is good against like fluster storm or not fluster storm um like a cunning wish because there's a spell in the middle but i think that keeping this would be a little bit loose shuffle play out the pedal pass basic swamp into thought Seize. i will attempt this veil of summer Bluster storm, not very nice. Okay, so Jax is able to now discard or ponder and leave us with two pieces of mana. Infernal Tutor, no such luck. Pass. Reordain. Three cards in Jax's hand. Can we draw something relevant? Okay. A little bit of show. A little bit of tell. And nope. They have three in hand. Draw. Pass. Suspense Profane Tutor. Three cards still in hand. Ay, ay, ay. Okay, one counter left. Yep. Two cards in hand. Brainstorm. Another Omniscience. Pass in Flames. Nope. And I believe the Profane Tutor comes off Suspend here, and then we die. That'll do. Off to game three. I think we just resubmit. Not interested in changing her deck at all. Let's go. Well, this is certainly a TES hand. Uh, I don't think you're allowed to just keep Double Veil of Summer, though. Mulligan. Sure. Get rid of the Cabal Ritual. Leyline of the Void. Start on a ponder. I really like this. Okay. Lotus petal. Lions eye diamond. We'll pass. Clue to delta. For an underground sea. I'm going to attempt to brainstorm here and just hide the two pieces of interaction. Oh no. Uh, I think I'm supposed to leave them with the veil. Because they're not likely to play another. Take a draw. Thought seize. Okay, so we'll take the show and tell here. Leaving them with double omniscience. Jax, you son of a gun. <sighs> Thought seize bug. They say that it's not real, but I don't know. Jax is in a commanding position here. We have a foster storm versus a deck that no longer needs to pay for spells. We'll draw. Another fluster, okay. Omniscience number three, you've got it. Draw for turn. It's land. Pass. Jax plays a land. I have a brainstorm. Don't think I'm supposed to... I don't know what to do with this. Pass, I guess. Draw. Dark ritual. Pass the turn. These fluster storms are not very helpful. Draw. I mean, this is only for eight. I think we just have to pass. Allow the brainstorm to resolve. We could double fluster, but they could just pay. Once again, I can double fluster here. I think that's probably what I'm supposed to do. Okay. And now we'll fluster again. The ponder has been countered. Come on, duck, pretty please. There we go. Brainstorm, Storm 1. Hmm. Like, this Tendrils doesn't actually help me. I guess it's better than the Besaidu at this point, so we'll stack it like this and just pass. They have three in hand. I'm just too far away. Take a random draw. Pass the turn. So you could just play out the Wishclaw, but if you think of what is likely in our opponent's hand if they're not casting anything, it's probably counter magic. So I want a way to fight through. And that is why I'm waiting on the Wish Claw. Alright, let's attempt the Claw. Force of Will. I'm not surprised by that. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Infernal Tutor. Storm 6. Okay, so they have two in hand. We have all the mana we could ever want in play. We just need to draw another Tutor. Draw. Not it. We'll pass. Another ley line, you've got it. Pass the turn. 
Draw. Ah, oh, jeez. Play the diamond. We really need another brainstorm. Omniscience number four. Draw. I'll take a ponder. Play wish claw. Ursul number three. I play a land. Sure thing. Fetch away the land we don't want on top of our deck. We're all out of fetchables. Draw. Brainstorm. There we go. Um, I actually can't cast everything I want this turn. So are we supposed to hide the ad nauseum on top? I think that's the answer. And hope to fade one draw step from them. Oh, if I wasn't a coward. All right, Jax, no whammies, please. No whammies. Cabal ritual. Ad nauseum, I will sacrifice for black. Ad nauseum. From 14. Another Cabal Ritual. And we've won the match. Wow. All right. So we are now 2-0. Three matches left to go. The Command Tower software by Eminence Gaming is perfect for hosting your own magic events with features such as easy to create event registration for four player and one on one Swiss based games. Event management has never been so simple and it's done on the web, no downloads are required. You can sign up for $5 by visiting eminence.events slash subscribe. Match number three, we're on the draw. This hand is not keepable mulligan. Ay, ay, ay. Uh. I don't love this. We'll go to five. This is the best hand we've seen so far. Bottom the Lotus Petal and Tendrils. Vernon Catacombs. Uh oh. Thoughtseize. So they're likely to take my Thoughtseize here. Something good? Nope. Play out a diamond. Yes. The turn. Loot. Reef Gristle Brand. Infernal Tutor off the top. Let's see it. Not Infernal Tutor. Okay, so we're one mana short of Ad Nauseum here. The one silver lining is I am guaranteed to be able to cast Ad Nauseum next turn. Dark Ritual. Reanimate. You've got it. My Dark Ritual has been taken. And they make that on the Gristle Brand. They can draw seven if they so choose. They have six in hand. I'm sorry, they're at six life. They have more cards than that in hand. Now they have six in hand. Dark Ritual. Entomb. For an Archon. Yeah, Archon would do it here because I discard my island and then it, it takes me off Ad Nauseam mana. Serious so Emissary. Yeah, we're cold to that. No, I have Eve. Um, but Eve isn't going to beat this. I guess if I have, like, the world's most insane ad nauseum, I could theoretically win. I would have to stop at a very high life total into Eve. Morena Filth. So they have 13 power on board, and we can't block that, so we're dead. Sweet. Leyline of the Void. We just want to be the control deck in this matchup. Take out the Ad Nauseum. 68 cards. It's a lot. Get rid of this Chrome Mox. The Reign of Filth. The Ave. 65. Likely shave at least one Wish Claw. I think I'm actually not going to board in the Flusters. I think it might be a trap. And then we'll board out one land. Let's try this. Game number two on the play. Wrong half of the combo. We'll go to six. So what's the point of playing for a ley line of the void if you're not going to draw them, right? Mulligan. Uh, I think I'm actually going to keep this. Getting rid of Tendril's Cabal Ritual. The plan here is that ley line just buys us enough time that we can win the game. Opponent currently thinking about their life choices. Lions of Diamond. Pass. So there is a silver lining for our opponent. Grief provided them a backup win condition that they can easily cast off land dark ritual. And like a lotus petal or two lands dark ritual. Okay. Unmask. 
Exiling Gristlebrand. They take our Thoughtseize. Draw. A. Right on the money. Grab an Underground C. Ponder. Bets. Oh no, we boarded out the Ad Nauseum. Okay, so we can set up a pier. I mean, it's slow, but we can do it. Pass. Oh no, I forgot about the helm. Oh, I'm a dummy. I'm a dummy. Why would I board in helm and then not think about it? Dark Ritual Grief. Okay, so, I mean, had I remembered, uh, it wouldn't have worked out, but... Ay, ay, ay. What am I doing? So we know that we're drawing a Infernal Tutor next turn. So if I Infernal Tutor, sack the diamond, go get another diamond, I believe that does it. And I don't even need to sacrifice immediately. So I can just diamond, we'll do black, black, activate the wish claw, go get Helm of Obedience, activate charting you. Okay. Show me our moves. They boarded in Dothy Voidwalker. That does give them the uh the beatdown plan. Okay, resubmit. Opponent is kept seven. Mulligan. Mulligan again. Mulligan again. Jeez, Doc. Why are you like this? There's four ley lines in here. I mean, this hand is cracked, but we're also on the draw versus reanimator. So this is a four, so you would keep land, dark ritual, tutor, out, lie inside diamond. Like, how often does this actually win? I'm going to go to three. Two. One. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Tyler. Like, some of you might have been saying, I would have kept this hand or this hand, but, like, I'm the draw against reanimator when they kept seven. Um... It's just like not practical. I've never won on a million to one. So if we can make that happen, I'd be thrilled. And they boarded in Serenity this game. Or Wear Terror, sure. Step one. Ah, oh, geez. Looting. No reanimate. Can't play that. Pass the turn. Magus of the Moon. Pass. We have a basic swamp in our deck. Grief Pitching Unmasked. So this shows us that they kept a hand with discard spells in it. All right. I've seen enough here. Uh, four Ley Lines. They did not want to show up in the post board games. It's unfortunate. We're two and one. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Let's bounce back after that tough loss. We're on the draw, and I will keep. So here we have everything we could possibly want other than a payoff spell, but you do have a pair of interactive pieces that should be able to buy you some time. So that's really what I'm banking on here. Reanimator again. Okay, so we have a chance at redemption here for our ley lines. They exiled an unmask. They have three cards remaining in hand. They took the Veil of Summer. Interesting. They have two cards. I mean, it has to be another discard spell or else this play wouldn't make sense. Or a reanimate on grief, sure. But why take the Veil of Summer then? And instead of going for like a pair of rituals. I think this play was a little bit odd. Decent draw. We still need a tutor though. Not casting Thoughtseize. So if you play the Thoughtseize here and there you have Gristlebrand in hand, you get very, very punished. Ouch. We fall to 17. Another Thoughtseize. Okay. Cabal Ritual down. Land pass. Ouch. Brainstorm is a good draw. We'll cast it. Okay. I think we're supposed to get rid of these two. And then I'm just going to play the Wish Claw this turn. Pass. We're pretty close to a Past in Flames line. We go to 10. Another Thought Seize. Okay. They're now at 11. Play the Underground Sea. We'll ponder. Find another Diamond. Does this do it? I think it might. 
So we use one mana, and then we make six. So we have seven mana total. Infernal Tutor for Past and Flames floating a black Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual. Yeah, this just wins. Okay. Here we will grab an Infernal Tutor. Now we get Past and Flames. Play it. Dark Ritual. Cabal Ritual. Infernal Tutor. Go grab the Chicken Tenders. We'll play another Dark Ritual just for safety. And target them. We got it. All right, we have stolen game number one from Reanimator, and now we have the Leyline plan again. Let's see if our deck decides to uh, cooperate here. Goodbye Ad Nauseam, goodbye Ave. We don't want the Rain of Filth or the Chromox or the Island. Need to take out one card, and it was a Wishclaw last time, so we'll do that again. I'm tempted here, but I think you're supposed to mulligan. So apparently the rule is I'm allowed to have Leyline of the Void, but I'm not allowed to have lands. We're going to go to five. Nope, to four. Best hand we've seen. So we will hide the the helm and brainstorm Thoughtseize. This is actually like kind of a reasonable hand, believe it or not. Unmask, pitching, reanimate. Goodbye, Infernal Tutor. Play the Bayou, we'll pass. They pass back, brainstorm. Pass the turn. They find land two. We'll cast it. Veil, Veil, Lines at Diamond. So I think we'll keep one Veil of Summer. Two seems excessive. Infernal Tutor off the top would now give us the Helm, but we couldn't activate it quite yet. We'll fetch. We saw Magus out of the last uh, deck, so I think we might as well grab the basic here just in case. Ponder. Sure. Pass. We'll draw and pass back. Just being patient, drawing through this ponder. Our opponent's not doing anything. So we can take our time here. Draw the Lotus Petal and we'll cast Brainstorm. Okay. We have a clean win if I put back both of these and our opponent doesn't happen to have the Wear Tear. Play the Wish Claw. We are fetching. Fetch again. Add three black, activate the Wishclaw Talisman. Helm of Obedience. Pay one, activate, target you. Exile your deck. Go. We have come back and we've beaten Reanimator using the Leyline Helm plan. Wish it would have worked, can't talk, in the previous round, but I'll take the victory. One match left to go. Let's finish strong with a four and one. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. The fifth and final round, we're on the draw against Matt Soleil, who tends to play non-blue decks, but here we see a tropical island. Let's fetch out our Bayou, because we have both Thoughtseize and Veil of Summer, but we can only cast... If I get, like, a basic Swamp or Underground Sea, I could only cast one. Wrecked. Okay. Veil of Summer Gamer. Is this Blue-Green Omni? Paradigm Shift. Uh-oh. Not looking good for the home team. We have been bodied. Concede. Well, that was awkward. So there's also a weird tension with this matchup where typically in order to beat Veil of Summer, you want the Leyline Helm plan, but they're a deck that needs to exile their own graveyard. So you don't want to do that. So instead we're going to bring in Fluster Storms and Dress Downs, maybe even the Spisaju. Get rid of the Reign of Filth and the Chrome Mox. We've boarded those two cards out every single round. This is what I'm sort of talking about where I'd rather just have like a Spisaju in my deck that could answer a main deck Chalice. We don't want the Ave. Ave has not been great either this league. 63. They got one Wishclaw. Probably a Cabal Ritual. I kind of want to board out a land. Maybe the Basic Island. Let's try this. Game 2. Nope. Uh, 
I guess so. I mean, this doesn't seem very good to me, but I don't want to go to five. Okay. Another land. I'm just going to attempt the Wish Claw here. Play Talisman and pass. Shell Dock Isle. You got it. Veil of Summer? Nope. What does that do for us? It means that we can use the Wish Claw for protection next turn, I think. So if I jam here, I go Dark Ritual, Vines Eye Diamond. To, yeah, I'm one mana short of Fluster Storm back up. So I think we're supposed to just pass instead. They ponder. Fetch. Grab another Underground Sea. Uh, another land. All right, so Dark Ritual, Alliance Eye Diamond, Infernal Tutor. This is Ad Nauseum. This is Fluster. I don't think it's necessarily getting much better for us, so I think I'm just going to jam now. Because next turn, they just have Land, Fetch, uh, Paradigm Shift, Oracle Win. All right, Infernal Tutor on the stack. Attempt to cast Ad Nauseum. Attempt to resolve Ad Nauseum, I guess, is uh, technically more accurate. Force Pitching Oracle. Activate the Wish Claw. Veil of Summer. And Veil of Summer is better than Flusterstorm here because we've already seen our opponent's copies of Veil of Summer. They play an Ice Fang Quaddle. Into another Force of Will. ay 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 that likely means that we're just dead. Okay. They use the claw. That's not very kind. Pass the turn. Ouch. A slow, painful death. We take three. Going to sit on this. Brazen Borrower. So now they're attacking for six a turn. Dress down. Okay, that's an interesting one. If I thought sees, I'm dead, though, so I actually have to pass here. So they attack for six, I'll go to two. On their end step, we will play the dress down. Draw a card, Infernal Tutor. Cabal Ritual for Threshold. Horse Pitch Brainstorm. So the only way I can possibly win this now is if I draw a Lion's Eye Diamond or another red source off. No, it would have to be Lion's Eye Diamond off this Veil of Summer. Instead, we're dead. Okay, so we got bodied, and we finished 3-2. Not the worst record. I didn't play particularly well in a couple of the matches, but overall, the matches we lost, I don't know if it's necessarily because of me. If you look at the reanimator match, we just never found Leyline in Game 3 until I was at one card. And on the draw, when they've kept 7, I don't think you're allowed to keep mediocre hands that just, like, don't really do anything, especially when those decks play 12 discard spells now. So I think you need to find the Haymaker that buys time. You could argue I, I, sh I shouldn't have mulliganed as low. I'd probably disagree with you, but hey, that's fine. And then in this matchup, it just seemed like a nightmare for what we were trying to do. So Tyler, thanks again for your donation deck. I really do appreciate it. Everyone else, I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you have some feedback. That's fine. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.